So as a PM, of course, you will be uh, very busy and will have limited time. So in the following example, we will focus on uh, how you can perform some of these previous steps that we discussed without having to set up any custom events or any custom conversion tracking. So without the need of any analytics support. So you can set up your first funnel basically based on screens very easily without any custom events. Uh, in this case that you see here, you can see a funnel that is set up to, uh, to track the different uh, steps in the sign up process as we're talking about the onboarding optimization and getting registered users. So uh, when, once you have a funnel set up, it normally takes only a, a, a few minutes. Uh, you're looking at the funnel here, you can click directly into the drop off area that we are highlighting here. Uh, and once you've clicked into this, this will take you directly to the list of those users or sessions, depending whether you are uh, using a user or a session funnel that have uh, dropped off. And um, uh, after you have clicked, what we also recommend you to do is that there's a very easy way for you to, to save this list of sessions or users as a custom segment. So later on, you can come back and look at them again and analyze them again very easily. Uh, now, in case of uh, uh, funnels, when you're trying to, like we are moving away now uh, um, from the new user onboarding and looking at uh, uh, activation. So in case you're looking at funnels uh, for a specific action uh, or first transaction, you can still use, uh, of course, screen based funnels. So there's still a chance or still an option for you not to get into anything complicated or event analytics. Um, and in case the action you specified, of course, cannot be tracked for some reason by screen navigation or, or changes in that, then you can, of course, you may, of course, send custom events to UXCAM, but uh, that only applies if that's specific to your case or your app. In most cases, you will have, uh, will have, have, uh, will have set up already some of these events. Uh, in GA or in Firebase, which you can also easily send uh, to UXCAM. But yeah, let's see what happens once you have clicked into that funnel drop-off part, right? Um, uh, uh, what will happen is that you will be taken to the user page to see the list of those users, right? So this can be a lot of users, can be hundreds and thousands. It can be a bit overwhelming at first, but the first quick action that we re recommend doing here is to check whether these users have experienced crashes or UI freezes, which often, uh, of, uh, of course, mean bugs as well. So as you can see there on the top right corner, you can very quickly have a look at this and make a very quick conclusion if uh, the issues for the drop-off are driven by technical problems or bugs. Um, yes, and um, uh, if there are no crashes, yeah, uh, then uh, uh, yeah, your, your fir first hypothesis can normally be that uh, there is a UX issue, right? Because normally there are two main types, let's say, of issues that are driving drop-offs. Uh, that's, that's, it's a simple categorization in this case, but there are the technical issues and there are user experience issues. So let's assume that uh, you've done this and you have found no technical issue and the biggest uh, uh, drop-offs were happening on the email registration screen, for instance. Then what you can do next is you can go uh, to heat maps and uh, because you've identified this screen already as a problematic screen, so you can go there and look into this specific screen to analyze it further. Now, when you're analyzing heat maps, uh, we recommend for you to look for three specific things. So first of all, looking, uh, you should be looking for confusing UX design issues. So um, you can filter the heat maps uh, to only see rage tabs, for instance. We are auto capturing these, as I mentioned before. Uh, and what are rage tabs? So rage tabs occur when a user taps multiple times on the same part of the screen within a sh short span of time. So I think most of us have experienced this in apps when we are a bit upset and you know, this is happening. This is what we call rage tabs. Uh, and if you see a lot of them happening, once you've filtered the heat map, they can reveal where users get mostly frustrated on the screen. And this is usually the sign of, uh, of confusing UX design. Now, the second thing that you can look at is uh, you can look for is broken UI elements. So you can also filter the heat maps for unresponsive tabs. 
uh, and thereby, uh, this way, you will be able to find uh, broken CTAs, for instance, which of course can be very problematic and can kill your conversion flow in the funnel. And you, of course, don't want to leave them there. You want to fix them as soon as possible. And lastly, uh, but not, not least, you can also filter the heat maps for different micro user interactions like zooms or, or, or swipes. So for instance, to give you an example, in case you see many zooms happening on a specific screen, this could mean that there are uh, content alignment issues and certain things are not very visible enough for the user. This often happens, uh, this can often, often, uh, often also be a specific device problem. Maybe on one device it's fine, but on the other device it's not okay. Uh, so you, uh, you can also get some answers on that by filtering the heat maps further by the different screen sizes or device types, so you can validate this as well. So after you have done all of this, uh, you normally have two options. So your first option is uh, you can dive into learning even more about what the user experienced and see the whole thing, uh, the session and their journey through their lens using session replays. However, it's very important, we only recommend doing this if you believe you have narrowed down uh, your analysis of the potential root causes enough. If you feel that, that uh, your conclusion might be too quick or maybe you might be jumping to too quick uh, conclusions, what we recommend is that you segment this drop-off segment that you have already saved a little bit further. And uh, in case you need to, or if you decide to segment further, even though we said that dashboarding is at the end of the process, you can already decide also to bring it in here uh, and do some quick data visualizations in UX CAM. So uh, if you remember, as we said, you have already saved at the very beginning this drop-off segment. So you can set up some, uh, some widgets uh, and some graphs for this very quickly for this segment specifically, and then you can segment it down and break it down into further attributes.